In 1 Samuel 22, we're going to start to see uh, where David and his mighty men kind of come from. Okay, and we're going to, we're going to look a little into, into the mighty men that David had serving with him and, and the great exploits that they had done. Verse number one, so, so in the context here in 1 Samuel, this is right after David is fleeing from King Saul, right? Saul's just out to kill David, everything else, and, and David just like, okay, I'm getting away, right? So he flees, he, uh, he goes to Abiathar, he gets the, he gets the sword of, um, of Goliath, right? He's on the run, and he takes off, and uh, he basically has 400 men that join up with him after he's fled from the presence of King Saul. Verse 1 of 1 Samuel 22, the Bible reads, David therefore departed thence and escaped to the cave of Dullam. And when his brother and all his father's house heard it, they went down thither to him. So, one, David's family stays true and faithful to him. His father's house, his brethren, you know, all of his family goes and joins up with him. Probably for two reasons. One, maybe because they like David. But two, if Saul's got a problem with David, Saul's going to have a problem with David's house. If David is supposed to be the next king, which Saul already knows this, he already knows that God is going to want to put him in his place because he's already, in, in God's mind, Saul's already deposed. Right? But Saul's trying to cling to his power. So anyone who's in the know of this is going to know it's very dangerous for anyone <laughs> in David's whole household to be around Saul because Saul might just end up trying to wipe them out. So the best bet they have is just, hey, let's just join up with David anyways. And if you know anything about um, kind of the relationships, you, you know, when you read through the books of, of First and Second Samuel and you get into Kings, you know, there's characters in, in First and Second Samuel like Joab, right? He was a captain of the guard and uh, Amasai and all these other guys, you know, the, the, the sons of Zeruiah, these are relatives of King David. So Joab is like his nephew, I think, if I'm remembering properly. It, 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 I forget the exact relation, but they're, but, they're, but they're somehow related that way. You know, it's like David's sister might be Zeruiah or something along those lines, and then you've got Joab and Amasai and all these other people, and they're all related. So this is all part of the household. So these people are coming with David, right? In addition, look at verse number two. The Bible says, and everyone that was in distress, and everyone that was in debt, and everyone that was discontented gathered themselves unto him, and he became a captain over them, and there were with him about 400 men. So in total, David's got about 400 people with him between his household and the, and the people that came with him. And then these other people. Now, these people, they're not like the cream of the crop, just in general. These are people who, it says in distress. It means they've got problems. They're in debt. They owe money to people, right? So they're just kind of looking at this as an opportunity to maybe start over and do something different with David. They're already having problems in their day-to-day with, with under, under King Saul, right? We've got debts, we're in distresses, and it says anyone that was discontented, so they're not very happy with their situation, you know, let's go join this guy over here. This is who David kind of picks up. But what's, what's cool about this, right? I mean, these aren't maybe the people that you would expect to be the ones that we read about Later on, when we get to the chapter, we're going to read about the mighty men. But this is where those mighty men are coming from. At least a lot of them are. It's from this group of people right here. And it's going to grow a little bit in just a minute. Let's go to chapter 23. Verse number 1, the Bible says, Then they told David, saying, Behold, the Philistines fight against Keilah, and they rob the threshing floors. Therefore David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I go and smite these Philistines? And the Lord said unto David, go and smite the Philistines and save Keilah. So David's trying to figure out what to do because the Philistines have invaded Israel. And, and David's going like, he's already on the run. And he's going, well, should I go and, and save this town? Should I save these people, right, from, from the hand of the Philistines? And then it says, look at verse number three. It says, and David's men said unto him, behold, we be afraid here in Judah. They're like, we're afraid here. Do you want us to go into battle? Like, we don't even know what's going to happen to us here. How much more than if we come to Keilah against the armies of the Philistines? 
Like we're already not, not that safe, feel that safe right here, David. Verse 4 says, Then David inquired of the Lord yet again. So he's like, okay, well, I'll ask God again. And the Lord answered him and said, Arise, go down to Keilah, for I will deliver the Philistines into thine hand. So his men are kind of afraid. They're not in the best situation, but you know what? God tells them to go and do this. And what does David do? He acts on faith, similar to Abraham, right? He's going to go out and do this. Was it very comfortable to go out and fight a battle? No. He's already on the run. He's already not in the best position. He's got this band of people that... You know, maybe at this point still wasn't the, the, to have the most confidence in, right? They've got debts, they've got all these other problems in their life, but this is who he has. And then it says in verse 5, So David and his men went to Keilah and fought with the Philistines and brought away their cattle and smote them with a great slaughter. So David saved the inhabitants of Keilah. He obeyed God. God wrought a victory through David. And he consults God. That's one of the great things about David. He consults God over and over again. 